office emergency. Warning markers for firearms. Get on the ground. Block it in, block it in, block it in. He's now off in the field. Derbyshire's traffic cops. Meaning Try and keep up with it. Battling crime in the middle of the country. Open the door now! He smashed down a bollard. How he's done now? Nothing. From the picturesque peaks, vehicle treating it as life threatening, to the inner cities. Yeah, he's done me. This side, this side. He's going to decamp. It's a decamp, decamp. Four runners under threat. You do what I tell you. Do not put your hands anywhere near your pockets. And at risk. Watch him. Box on, box on. Run two traffic cars now. Around every corner. Don't bulk it. There's a new challenge. Hands on the wall! For the traffic cops. Coming up, officers hunt down armed raiders. The guy at the back who's got quite a large stick in his hand. You throw that at someone, it's like a spear. Suspect thieves targeting heavy goods. They look like metal cutting discs. And high value machinery. A theft of what? Plant machinery. And tackle joyriders in stolen cars. Yeah, they're expected to start well to stop. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Go! Go! Across the country. Over three and a half thousand thefts are reported every day. And have you noticed any other property that's been taken? To track these thieves down, police rely on the network of cameras lining Britain's roads. The IP said while officers were with her when it was stolen, she received a phone call from a friend saying that they'd seen the vehicle matching this description in Chad. Fourteen miles northwest of Derby, traffic cop Craig Dawes is looking for a stolen car that's triggered police cameras. The report that we'd got is that the owner had dropped some keys, um, didn't know where or when, and somebody picked it up and, and drove the car. Um, but car key burglary in our it's a big problem we're suffering at the moment. Normally, they burgle the house, steal items, and then make off in the car. So far, the, the vehicle's hit up somewhere, supposedly in convoy with a Corsa. So we're looking for that as well now. It is important that we try and locate it as quick as possible. The cops are also looking for a red Vauxhall Corsa, which has been seen travelling together with the stolen car. It's always nice to catch somebody in the act, but... It's, it's very rare that that happens. Oh, I have just come round there now. Craig and colleagues, including traffic cop Matt Cooling, surround the area. We've managed to pinpoint it down to a, a rough town, but pretty much it's a nice day. The area's busy. There's lots of tourist areas. You know, if this car fails to stop, you know what's going to happen? Is it going to collide? Is it going to cause damage? How are we going to get injured? With Craig and other units minutes away, Matt keeps his distance. Yeah, in front of me, there's a blue BMW, member of the public. In front of that is something vehicle, which is the goal. And then ahead of that, is the course that was meant to be convoy towards Derby. I'm making my way through There is a lot of responsibility when you're the first car that makes contact with it. My job is to continue to follow it and give live updates as to where we're going, whether it's changing its manner of driving due to seeing me. It's not a failed stop at this time. It's driving normally in traffic. It's then a case of me getting other units behind me to catch me up, and at the first available opportunity, I look at boxing the vehicle in. The planets will get sufficient uh, T-pack resources. I will look at the preemptive box on the goal initially. 
At Force HQ, Control is able to track the officers and help position other units ahead of Matt. I'm behind you now. After six minutes, Craig catches up. Up ahead, Matt and the suspect cars are stuck at temporary traffic lights. Julia, I've got you inside now. Yeah, just be mindful when this traffic passes, he is watching the offside mirror. You've got him up prepared to uh, should it called stop the stinging. Yeah, two four. Gents, yeah, after this traffic then, move up please. I'll take car one. Mark car take two. Take car two. And if you can take car three in the rear, doors in. I'm clear now of traffic. So the driver has clocked me and he's been fidgety in the seat, watching me constantly in the mirror, clearly watching for what's going to be the next move that we're going to make. Yeah, no, this is a stolen As Matt and Craig pursue the stolen golf, the suspect Corsa is left behind. Well, throw to continue, please. Thank you. Speed is now 6 0 increasing in a 5 0. DRA is low at the moment. Now entering the town, it is 8 0 in a 3 0. There's nothing fun about being involved in pursuits, they are dangerous and it exposes a lot of people to danger and risk. Cool, stand by. The car has hit a curb and is damaged. Yeah, vehicle lost control on an offside bed. This vehicle has got heavy damage to its rear near side wheel, buckled and the vehicle is crabbing. Speed is 7-0 in a 5-0. The vehicle's all over the road due to the damage. I'm just conscious I need to bubble it. DRA's high. I'm holding back. I'm a good probably 3 400 yard, I think, now. So the driver's now damaged his wheel, and even at that point, he continued to drive at high speed. And it just means that, you know, the risks are even higher than what they were before, because he's now got control of a vehicle which is now all over the road and is still not slowing down. Ahead, a stinger is set up to puncture the stolen car's tyres. Yeah, vehicle is uh, now slowing. Just trying to play catch up. Yeah, now regain our ball the vehicle, still crabbing. Speed is 8-0 and a 5-0. I've got a near side indication, stand by. Get out of the car! Get him back, get him over. Get him back, get him over. Get him over. Yep, get him up, guys. Come on, get around here. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Down! Down! Yeah, 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 yeah. Prison time! You're under arrest. Suspicion of theft. There. Yep, I'm failing to stop. Failing to stop for police. Yeah. Dangerous driving. Yeah. No insurance. No insurance. Have you got any insurance? Always a stolen car, oh. so you won't be insured. Stolen. And theft of a motor vehicle. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. So you don't have to say anything. But it may only be defensive. You don't mention when questioned something which later will only court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence, and it's necessary for the prompt and effective investigation of those offences. I think you can have a solicitor who can at least do that for you, yeah. Up you get. Up you get. This one? You got anything on you? Scratches? No. Sure? Yeah. That had the potential there to become, a, you know, a serious incident. No regard to anybody's safety. Luckily, uh, nobody's been injured or any other vehicles damaged. That's the main thing. You know, great sting by uh, JT up there, which you say about his rear tyre. Yeah, we've got the sting, yeah. Certainly got, went over it. As I was pulling it back in, another a car's come over and dragged it out of my hand, so it's ripped it out of my hand, so it's cut my hand to smithereens as well. Sting is a brilliant tool that we use now. It's becoming more and more common. I saw it, I saw the back end of it in the road. As I've stung it, and I'm pulling it back in, because I was pulling it across the road. I saw, I saw a string like yeah. in here. And that's how it ended, luckily for you lot, it ended up where it did. Yeah. Because couldn't do anything about it. No, mate, good work, good work. The driver and his passenger are both under 18. What you got on you? Anything? I, I was shocked at how young they looked. These are kids that are driving this car, probably don't have a licence, and the risk that they've just taken for what gain, what are they going to get out of this? In the last five years, there have been more than 12,000 prosecutions involving teenagers under the age of 18 for car crimes. Sweating, boss. It will be. Oof. We find that teenagers are involved in car crime quite a lot, whether from joyriders or they've been sent in to do the burglary to take the cars. You know, you tend to find that Mr Big at the top of the chain will, will find somebody vulnerable, find somebody that just wants a bit of money, here's £50, I want that car stealing from there, bring it to there, thank you very much. bought it earlier. I had no ignition that it was stolen. Well, I'm telling you it is, all right? Mm -hmm. Whoa, not that car! Not that car! As the road reopens, officers spot two more teenage suspects in the red Corsa, which is believed to be linked to the stolen Golf. So what we've got is, as I was talking about this in convoy, we've managed to get that as well. Um, so a great result, add by all. Anything you do say may be given in evidence, do you understand that? OK. These will be taken to Ripley custody now, where they'll be dealt with by the local force, where the vehicle's been stolen from. Everything came together quite nicely, successful outcome on this job. It's 25 degrees outside, you've got two pairs of trackies on, well, two jumpers. Eh? You stand back and think, the kids. Your taxi up you get then, chap. But then, they, regardless of their age, they put others at risk and me. All right, mate. Cheers. Down, cheers. With the four suspects facing questioning about their involvement in the theft of the Gulf, it's the end of a busy shift for Craig and the team. Coming up, criminals desperate to get away. Males have just stolen tools and smashed the windows to a van with a hammer. It's shocking. One of them's got a hammer, who obviously smashes the window, and the other appears to have a machete. Gangs targeting motorway services. Three occupants arrested that have been seen angle grind in the back of a lorry. And a burglary in progress as thieves smash their way into a shop. I don't think people quite understand sometimes how crucial that CCTV can be in giving us a lead on something. Across England and Wales, police recorded more than 1.3 million thefts in 2021. They increasingly rely on the country's network of cameras to bring criminals to justice. CCTV is a massive, massive positive for the police and it is a huge piece of evidence that the police can use. It is a massive deterrent for people and it is hugely, hugely positive. Hello? Emergency. I've looked at the tool stolen from my van and I've been attacked with a hammer and, the, and my, my vehicle's window smashed. We're in the middle of nowhere, and I'm not, I'm not comfortable. 
No, I bet you are. Can you get some more please? Because if you come back armed with a hammer, I'm in trouble. observations and units in the Gunfield area for a incident that just happened with Gunfield. Males have just stolen tools and smashed the windows to a van with a hammer. On the M1 near Chesterfield, traffic cop Andy Swift is 10 miles from the scene of the reported attack and theft. I'm junction 30, I'll start making my way over that way. Could you uh, try and find out a bit more about what type of van it is, please? Yeah, he didn't know, he just said a large white van, um, 16 plate, that's what you've got. People stealing tools from a van in Dromfield. It's one of them things though, middle of the day, white van men are all out and about, do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not six in the morning or anything like that where people aren't around. My plan is just look for a vehicle that matches the description of the one that's been given by the victim, so in this case a white van. You're massively against it because they can go anywhere they want, you're, but at the same time, you've only got to get lucky once, whereas they've got to get lucky every time. After an hour searching for the thieves, I'm only about a mile away, I think. The victim has found the van abandoned nearby. The van moving thinks it's on cloned plates. So. At the moment, they're probably fully aware of the fact that we believe that they're driving a white van. It's an easily identifiable feature. They haven't got a description of them. If they're out on foot, obviously it just makes it a lot more difficult, especially if they split up to make the getaway. I've never been down here before. Yeah. 47, state six with the van. The location is just in the middle of nowhere, really. It's a countryside area. It's good for them sometimes because not many witnesses. Um, so they might think, well, we can dump it here, and then it might not get noticed for, I don't know, a day, two days. Whereas if they start dumping it and taking things out the back in the middle of a town or a city, there's obviously a lot more witnesses around, and you've got things like CCTV and stuff like that. Hello. Hey, man, all right? Are you all right? Are you the one that phoned up, are you, about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely. Nicked, I think. Is it? What's it look like a clear about? I assume they've nicked it, whatever was in it is in terms of the parcels, and then obviously that other stuff I think has been nicked as well, where from, I'm not sure. But Right, well that's my stuff. Is that your stuff, is it? Yeah. Right. Is that you the one that phoned up earlier on then, are you? I thought, what happened was I was upon Woodmere, you probably don't know it, I was up at Holmesfield, mowing, yeah. swimming around, and they backed into the little snicket that I was in. Yeah. And I went to put my mower back in the van as they drove off, opened the van, van bare. Right, I get what so, I went in pursuit. Yeah, I and they yeah, came down here. Yeah. And I got to there, and they jumped out with a lump hammer. Uh, right, as in the and sure. put the window through. Right. So I sped off that way. Obviously, you would do. Obviously, yeah. phone nine nine nine. Yeah. So I thought I'll just come back down to see if, because if they get pulled and they've got a mower in the back, so I thought it might just be discarded there. Uh, is, is the uh, still blower thing yours? That's still well, blower, it? and that lawnmower oh, is mine. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so if you want to make your life a bit easier. Get your stuff out of That'd it now. Yeah, so yeah. if you've got your, do you want to bring your van up? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, just bring it up you. here, mate. Yeah, of course you can. Despite the rural location, a property with CCTV has captured the moments after the gardener tried to get his stuff back. The violence is shocking. The lengths people want to go to for what is effectively a mower and a strimmer are unbelievable, really. It angers me when you watch it and see what they're willing to do. One of them's got a hammer, who obviously smashes the window, and the other appears to have a machete. I know a lot of tradesmen, builders, and, and, and everybody you speak to, there isn't one who's not had this sort of experience. It's just a, you know, it's a, it's an epidemic. Thanks, mate. No worries. It's getting the stuff back that's the main thing. You know, because I can't, I can't work without, without the stuff, you know. And to keep going and buying stuff at £1,000, £1,500, only for it to happen again maybe in, a, in another couple of weeks, you know. I don't know what the answer is. Complaints. By checking the vehicle identification number through the windscreen, Andy can find the identity of the van. Stolen from Preston Road in Macclesfield, personal delivery van. On the 5th of March this year. It's 
it's been stolen. They don't want to be seen as we're driving around that because it might act at APR cameras or people might be looking for it. And they'll just stick on other vehicles, number plates, generally of a similar description. So a Peugeot partner. Might not be quite the same model or a Peugeot box or whatever it is. Might be a slightly different engine or something like that. But it'll be something that if you were to glance at it, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's the right vehicle. This is why when your parcels don't get delivered and everyone's at home moaning like I am, going, where's my parcel? There's some poor souls had the van nicked. That's a shoe, that one. Oh dear. There is a massive issue at the moment with parcel delivery vehicles being stolen. You've got all the parcels, so there might actually be something of real value in there. And also, you've got yourself a stolen vehicle, so it's a massive problem. But parcels aren't the only items the thieves have been targeting. They've obviously been nicking a lot of tools because this is a van that obviously delivers Amazon parcels. So it would have no need for a wood plane and other tools as far. So they've obviously been using it to nick tools for a while. I'll tell you what, they're ready if anyone stops them. Baseball bat, nine iron. <laughs> There's no doubt that if they were going to be stopped by the police or attempt to be stopped, they're already in possession of weapons that they can use. So it shows you what type of people you're dealing with. Because, I mean, I think it's fair to say they're probably not avid golfers or baseball um, aficionados. So I think it's quite clear what they got them for. Um, I mean, probably the more concerning one is clearly this is a massive, massive crowbar that someone's got. I mean, that is weighty. I mean, like, you throw that at someone, it's like a spear. It's like something from, like, I don't know, something some from ancient times. Throw that at someone and that goes straight through your windscreen. With no sign of the thieves, all Andy can do is recover the van and its contents for forensics and hope there's a match to the men caught on camera. The people that are out and about committing these crimes on this level, this is an organised crime gang. And the lengths they're willing to go to is just crazy. The value of what they're stealing and what they'll get for it is massively outweighed by the violence or willingness to use violence. Respect is belief. With five million CCTV cameras, the UK has the world's fourth largest surveillance network. And police secure over a million convictions each year as a result. A picture speaks a thousand words and being able to review something via CCTV shows unbiasedly what's happened, and that, for us, is best evidence. Then I'm just approaching Junction 29, so I'm going to come off and wait on the north onslaught. You might as well wait, Chris, on the roundabout initially, mate, in case it comes off. Staff at a motorway service station have alerted the police to some suspicious activity in their lorry park. Traffic cop Matt Cooling is nearby. We've received information that two people have been witnessed trying to break into a lorry trailer at Tip Shelf Services. Apparently it's a black BMW. I've just uh, I've got a car sat on the overbridge in case it comes off, and I'll sit here, see if I can get behind it here. I know there was other units that were nearby and looking and it was just a case of strategically placing ourselves in a position where we were going to come across it. This is it coming past us now, we think. Attention. Colleagues are already following the suspects as Matt joins the motorway. We're on the motorway network, on the M1. You know, it's a fast four-lane bit of the motorway, a very dangerous place. And what we don't want is a situation where this vehicle is going to start upping the ante, trying to get away at high speed, because then we've got a big risk then of getting other members of the public embroiled in the incident. The decision was when we knew that we'd got a safe, sterile area that we were going to put a box on and bring this vehicle to a stop. Wait, 
With enough police units in place, Matt and the team move in. Stopped you before, I think a few weeks ago. Well, don't we'll like his voice from Leeds, that's what it is. Well, Leeds people, they don't like us over here. The occupants of the car were from out the county, they were from West Yorkshire. And what we see is that in relation to theft from HGVs and the organised crime aspect, those individuals involved in that are generally from the same area that these four had come from. We stopped you before, or Derbyshire? We've had information that suggests that a vehicle similar description to yours, the occupants have been seen to angle grind uh, a lorry at Shelf Services. All right. Thieves will often cut through lorry curtain sides to check the value of the cargo before returning to steal it. Two batteries, Matt. Were they all in the middle bit? Yeah. Makita. Yeah. Expensive, uh, yeah. They look like metal cutting discs. Put one like a little like, angle grinder. So I just cut through, cut through metal. Fortunately, the only thing we're missing is the... Um, Angle grinder itself. I reckon that's been tossed, mate. That's going to have been yeah, discarded or thrown somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. Listen, there were two lads in a beamer, 54 plate grey beamer. Where did they go? I don't know. When I pulled out, was from there? What? Well, like, and, and they the, all smoked um... up a proper old car, you know what I mean? The driver was trying to claim that we'd stopped the wrong BMW, that he'd seen another one at the services and they also have got the wrong people. Officers also find high-vis jackets in the car. Sometimes being really bright and you know, stand out makes you actually look more incognito than actually creeping around in black hoodies. So, you know, work gloves, high-vis, just all like the wandering around the trucks to, you know, go back to one of their own lorries. They've put a plastic cover over it thing though, mate. What on there? It's estimated thieves steal goods worth £70 million from trucks every year. Get on laptop. Get on laptop. Three occupants arrested at the minute that have been seen angle grinding the back of a lorry. So uh, they're locked up for vehicle interference with a view to obviously steal something from it, we suspect. So see so what they've got to say when they're interviewed. We'll get the car seized. I'll see you back at the office. They don't give up. They're at it relentlessly, day in, day out. I've met the driver about twice, I think. Three times, possibly. The, the issue is that, you know, they're, the, they're the, the spotters, so to speak. You know, they're the one that will go and, you know, see what's in these trucks, whether it's worth nicking from them or whatever. They're just part of the chain. And then as soon as they find something that's worth taking for them, then they'll call in this other lorry or something and, and that gets loaded up then with all the goods. And the first time the lot other you know, the innocent lorry driver will know about it is when they woke up from the slumber. It's all part of organised crime higher up, but um, the looks run out tonight. Coming up. A suspected gang targeting heavy machinery. The informant's had his CCTV upgraded since it's theft a couple of days ago and it's caught the exact same vehicle that turned up in Nick's trailer the other night, so um, there's a good chance that they are going to turn back up. And it's a race against time to catch armed thieves. Defenders don't care who they hurt, what they do. To them, when you're in a cop, it's, it's absolutely nothing. Okay, sorry, just speak a bit slower. So you've got a shock and what's happened? Across England and Wales, there are 1.8 million thefts and burglaries every year. Have you got CCTV in your shop? But catching thieves in the act is never easy. Were they on foot or on bike? So I've been at cop coming up eight years now and theft has never seemed to go down since I started. Thieves are, are just the absolute scum of the earth. 
they, they ruin everybody's life that they come across. Oscar Tango 3 4 you available for a 10 14 intruder activation, uh, any over? Yeah, I'm coming in from uh, Alfreton side. CCTV monitoring system at the tip shelf has confirmed intruder. Traffic cop Chris Wells Jackson is on his way to a burglary. While I'm travelling, the information that I'm getting told is that the offenders are inside the building, the alarm's sounding, and the smoke screen's gone off. With Chris just moments away, time is critical. The thieves are getting ready to make their escape. Chris searches the store, but there's no sign of the thieves. So he checks the CCTV to help identify the suspects. Um, so on the CCTV, so 0309, the blue vehicle comes past. A minute later, we see these offenders turning up. One of them's armed with a baseball bat, and the other one, interestingly, goes straight for the bin lid. But you can see this guy's got some sort of jemmy and they're just taking the time to, to crowbar the door up. The guy at the back who's shrouded in the, uh, the smoke, he's got quite a large uh, stick in his hand. I mean, this guy here's got a knife in his hand. They're obviously professionals at what they do. They'll have been here in the daytime as a general customer. So have a good look round, scope round the shop, look at where the exits are, look at what security features the shop's got. They'll have planned every little bit of this and they'll have had a target to get in and out within three or four minutes and essentially that's what they've done. I'm sure they'll have scoped another shop out and another one after that and they'll keep doing it and doing it and doing it until they get caught because it obviously pays. Less than a minute between those guys walking out of the, uh, the shop and going across the car park the same blue vehicle heads back in the opposite direction. So uh, we'll do a little bit of research on it. We'll pass some observations out across our force and neighbouring forces and hopefully at some point tonight we'll get that picked up before it does another job. I don't think people quite understand sometimes how crucial that CCTV can be in giving us a lead on something. When it comes down to tracing vehicles, people don't realise how important it is for us to link them to a series of other similar offences because there will always be CCTV at the next offence and the one after that so when you start putting things together it creates a much bigger picture and ultimately that bigger picture will lead to a better investigation. Convenience stores and service stations aren't the only target for thieves. Trade in heavy machinery has become big business for organised criminals. And in the last year, there has been a 50% rise in these types of thefts. Plant theft is very common, and because you only have to steal one item, and that could be worth 40, 50 grand. If you've already got a buyer that's willing to, to take that off your hands, then it's, it's an easy night's work. I know Tango for nine. What was the uh, informant's address, please? Have they mentioned any vehicles on the log? Chris is two hours into another shift. Somebody's called up to say that someone's turned up at an address and starting to film some plant machinery, possibly um, looking at stealing it. So I'm just going to make his way to the area. The information I'm getting as I'm travelling is that this guy's trailer's been stolen a few days back and he recognises the offending vehicle that's just turned up on his street. So he thinks that these guys are going to come back and steal his, his money digger. So the informant's house is a little bit further back. 
it turns out that the guy that's called us uh, was just having some CCTV fitted and they should have captured the vehicle and the reg on the CCTV that they're fitting. The victim has clips of his trailer theft. Hi, mate. Well, that's my trailer, so basically it was here, yeah. wedged in behind my van. This is got us forward and it's gone. Magic. Here's footage. So that's here, looking from that camera of the garage. Yeah. 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 It's on the camera. It's really hurting because by having that trailer stolen, he's had to pay to uh, rent another trailer to carry on his business. Can they get access yeah, to that digger? And on top of that, he's got the worry that these people are going to come back and steal something else of his. With his trailer already gone, the man is worried the gang will return tonight for his mini digger. It's an issue that is costing tradesmen millions of pounds a year. If you do see it again, just ring straight back in. People will go to try and find it. All right, mate. Cheers. Cheers. The suspect getaway car is linked to an address close by, so Chris and his colleagues begin a search. It's registered here. There's every chance it's just drove down here off the cuff. And it ain't there now. It's a strange one. I mean, you could almost throw a stone to, to that address, couldn't you, from the offence location, so... It's quite strange. So I'd be very, very surprised if it's going to do anything that close to home, but... Um, you never know. Minutes later, the suspect car hits police cameras. Four nine, I'm not far away. Adam, keep behind it, mate. Chris is trying to get ahead of the car so he can intercept it. I'm going to sit at the uh, juncture with Pinkston Lane and Mansfield Road. Is it coming in that direction? Coming up. Contact, contact today. Chris catches sight of the suspect. Turn left, left, left onto Mansfield Road. If I go in front, someone else just wants to drop up behind it. And moves in to make an arrest. Those plates that was in the back of that car, okay? They are plates off a stolen trailer. In the last year, there's been a significant rise in the theft of heavy machinery, costing businesses an estimated £400 million. Can they get access to that digger? The traffic cops in Derbyshire are on the hunt for a suspect linked to the recent theft of a trailer and the targeting of a mini digger. Yeah, 2 4. I'm sat at the end of Pinkston Lane. It comes this way. In fact, it's in front of me now. Contact, contact today. It's a turn left, left, left onto Mansfield Road. 15 miles north of Derby, traffic cop Chris Wells Jackson has found the suspect car. 2 4. It's straight on, straight on. The mini roundabout. Chris believes the suspect may be planning another theft from the same location. If, uh, if I go in front, if someone else wants to drop up behind it. Hi, mate. Hi. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, good, up. Good. Um, reason I've stopped you yeah. is the vehicle's been seen in suspicious circumstances. Right, okay. All right. Um, so, I'm going to take some details off you, okay? Um, do me a favour, turn the engine off, we'll get our car shifted, all right, and then uh, we'll come here and put the road up, all right? I'm just going to grab your keys. Mm, Whose vehicle is it? Um, it's, it's one of my friends, to be honest. It's one of your friends. Are you sure to drive it? Um, it's on a trader's policy, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay, no problem. Right, so basically, um, this vehicle's possibly been involved in a theft at some point in the last couple of days and then possibly scoping out for another theft earlier on this evening. Are you joking? No. 
So a theft of what? Um, plant machinery. Yeah. Right, I'm just going to detain you at the moment. Yeah, All no right, problem. someone else going off. All right. Yeah. So who's that number plates in the back of the car? Mate, I had no idea. The cars used variously. Plates in the back of the car from stolen vehicles. Oh, Can right. I just stand and smack them? No, not at the moment. You're detained. All right. Just come sit it back in my car for mm -hmm. me. There is a number plate in the back from the stolen trailer. So, uh, it's a good result, really. I'm going to keep you in cuffs. I'm going to detain you for the purposes uh, of a search that you yourself in that vehicle, all right? Yeah, no I'm problem. sure you've probably not got much on yourself, okay? But just to let you know, um, you've been detained under section one of pace, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the grounds for that search are obviously the vehicle's been seen in suspicious circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we believe it might have been involved in a plant theft uh, a couple of nights ago. Right, okay. okay. i just go wise in the we? Mate, you're not showing as being insured on the, the policy. Have you got vehicle you can drive at all? Well, I'm fully comprehensive on other vehicles. Other vehicle. There's my policy, look. That's me there. It has come up as I need to do a payment on it, but it's still it's still active. It says this policy has expired or has been cancelled. It says it that's, the that's the text I've had today then, but it is still running till midnight. That is that is my typical look there. It says policy end date, 31st of the 5th, 2021. So that was four days ago. Mm, shit, I've missed Santa. Yeah. Is there no way I can do something about right, that? Right, I'll be straight with you. All right, well, so sure th right. those plates that was in the back of that car, okay? Yeah. They are plates off a stolen trailer. You're joking. No. Okay, that's the trailer that was stolen two days ago, okay? So, the suspicious circumstances that vehicle's been seen in tonight has been near the exact same offence location as right. the trailer being stolen the other night. I'll be straight with you, you come in with us for an interview, okay? No problem. Right. I'm no expert, but putting two and two together, we might just get four. While the suspect is checked in for questioning. Chris updates the owner of the stolen trailer. Hi mate, it's police, you alright? Yeah, not too bad. Good, got some good news for you. We've got the vehicle stopped and a lad locked up and your reg plates off your trailer are in the back of the car, so I'm happy it's the right vehicle. I just knew something could come with it. No, you're alright. Um, I can't promise you the, the world and say that he's, he's no, going to be no, going to no, prison, no, etc. No, but, um, totally, but we're getting somewhere on, we're let's face it. Yeah, I mean, we, lit we literally got him stopped about 15 minutes after I spoke to you. Just kick his your shoes off. Yeah, it's Cheers, Ian. We've really got to have some solid evidence to prove that he's stolen it. Hopefully, the CCTV will show enough to get some sort of conviction yeah. against him. It's estimated that the widespread use of CCTV has helped reduce the burglary and theft rate by up to 20% a year. It amazes me the lengths people go to to steal something, but at the same time, unfortunately, if you've got someone who's willing to buy something, if there's a demand there, then people are going to carry on doing it. In this episode, the teenagers arrested in the stolen golf for theft of a motor vehicle, failing to stop and dangerous driving have both been released under investigation while the police undertake further statements and phone analysis. The driver and passenger in the suspected convoy car were later de-arrested and no action was taken against them for any offences. In the case of the attack with the hammer and the gardener's stolen tools, forensic tests have identified two suspects but as yet, no arrests have been made. The men suspected of attempting to steal from a lorry were released without charge the following day due to the unlikely prospect of a conviction. Each of them have been arrested on more than two occasions for similar offences in the last year. Police were unable to identify the suspects who broke into the convenience store or their getaway car. And the man arrested on suspicion of stealing a trailer and the targeting of a mini digger was not charged with any theft offences, but he has been reported to court for driving without insurance and with a bald tyre. He could be facing a driving ban for totting up. Oh.